Welcome to this brand new video series. In this series, we would cover the Azure AI 900 real exam questions. Now, most of my videos, if you watch, it comes with very detailed explanations. So even if you have not gone through any courses, you would be still able to make out sense by going through these questions and answers. If you are not from the AI background, I would request you to also go through the Udemy course on AI 900. That will help you build some concepts. But you, if you don't have leisure of time, then you can stick to this video series. This is the part one video of this video series. I would request you to subscribe to my channel and like my videos. If you find these video series helpful, then please drop in your comments. An appreciation or two will really help me motivate myself. Now let's jump to the questions. Now this is a very interesting question. You want to predict the sea level in meters for the next 10 years. And which type of machine learning would you use in this case? So there are three options given classification, regression and clustering. So remember a thumb rule whenever you have something which is numeric and that is something which you want to predict then regression fits in very well. Now here you see the sea level is in meters. This is a numeric value maybe 10 meters, 100 meters or 20 meters something of that sort and you want to predict this over the span of 10 years. Now regression model this comes in these flavors linear regression polynomial logistic and so on for this exam it is not utter important to know all of these in the advanced exam you will have to know it but not for AI 900 in this exam it is important for you to understand the concepts and understand in which use case which type of model would fit in now this is the right answer but let us understand classification as well now the first thing you should uh, understand in terms of prediction is that th this is actually machine learning and with machine learning you have to create a model train the model test the model these are the activities you have to do consider this model as a two year old baby and now you have to train this baby or you can also consider this as your uh, small puppy dog that you have bought home. Now you have to train them. In order to train them, you will have to give certain set of inputs uh, on which the training would happen. Now take the example of uh, in the recent times, there was a lot of COVID infections. Now in that case, suppose take a small city like uh, I would say New York it's not a small city it's a big city but take the example of New York now every day there are certain infections being reported and almost on a weekly basis or in fact in in certain times on a daily basis there were deaths being reported now you must have seen a lot of uh, scientists they were predicting that uh, in the next month what will happen how many deaths will happen and how many infections will happen and based on that what kind of medical facilities are required and how many beds are required and this exercise was happening all across the globe even in india so how did they predict they were taking the uh, data that were getting logged those were the inputs the some of the past data because the event started happening uh, from March worldwide, March 2020, in China it was occurring maybe from December 2020, uh, 2019, but across the world it, it started happening or people started recognizing this from March 2020 and from April the statistics got started reporting. Now the scientists were taking these data sets from the past and then they were identifying what are the boundary conditions and then these were getting uh, fed as inputs so they used to pick which sort of inputs we will consider for training the model so when you train the model you will have to train it for the boundary conditions uh, both the ways so that your model is good enough but you should also always remember that in certain cases there will be erroneous records or there will be an outlier which is way too high or way too low so when we train models 
usually we uh, exclude the outliers otherwise it messes up your uh, prediction capabilities so your model always remember should be relatively generic and it should not be very focused on just one scenario the model should be generic so that it should fit in well for different scenarios now take the example of classification okay so what with terms of covid data how will the classification happen is based on the inputs for example if it is a comorbid patient and they are putting in inputs of say blood pressure sugar and etc uh, or if the patient has a heart disease symptom or heart disease history uh, kidney disease history and etc they were logging that and then they were classifi classifying each of them into small categories so they know that okay if the patient uh, has a heart disease then we would classify them as uh, high risk if the patient has sugar they would classify that high risk if the patient is uh, having an age which is say greater than uh, 50 years of age we would classify them as medium risk if the patient is having an age greater than 60 years of age we would classify them as high risk so that is how you do the classification clustering is similar you what you try to do is if you have a lot of data points for example uh, you have the blood pressure and sugar levels of so many patients so then you will try to cluster create clusters like put similar ranges in one cluster because if you think that you will have to medicate people based on the, these uh, uh, values then you may want to create clusters and put a lower range and higher range for that cluster that way uh, you can then identify people to be medicated in a following a particular protocol i hope this clarifies the concept now let's move to the next question Oh, this is the next question please pause this video if you want to read it in leisure so the question says that you already have an existing data set and now from that you want to create a training data set and a validation data set now in the azure ml designer which module should you use now here there are four options you can read the options so let us decode the options in this case like you understand the concept first you have a big pie of pizza and now you want to use a small pie suppose you want to taste this pizza first before you you know grab it and have the whole pizza and then if you don't like you will have to waste that pizza right so what you usually do is just take a small pie of it so what same thing we have to do it with the data sets also you have an excel sheet full of data and uh, what you have to do is you just have to pick certain set of data sets for your training purpose what do you mean by training you just want to taste the pizza right now you just want to see if you know for example you are cooking a delicious meal and uh, one, once you are almost done you know the cooks would put in a spoon and they would taste if all the ingredients are at the right levels or not so same in the same way we need to do this with the data sets as well so what does the chef do, does well, he or she will taste the dish with the spoon and then if suppose that person feels that uh, we should put some more salt then some more salt will be added then again they will test they will taste it and then see if now is it appropriate if not uh, suppose there is a, uh, it's light on spices and you need to add some more spices so this iteration goes till the chef is fully uh, satisfied that the taste is as per his desire 
similarly in the data set what we have to do is we have to split the data we have to uh, you know you have a full big excel sheet suppose uh, 60000 records but for our training purpose you don't know if uh, which model would fit in well you have uh, an understanding that okay these two models is something which i want to try so it is just like picking a small spoon of that dish or picking a small piece of pizza to taste it so that's why you're splitting it you will cut the pizza into a small piece and what so what are you doing you are, you are splitting the pizza so here also you will have to split the data this is the right answer but let's look at other options for example join data the join data is used to join multiple data sets so that you get uh you get some variety or cross pollination of data that is the purpose in this case that will not fit because you want to just pick a small data set for training joining this data set will not help adding new rows will not help because you already have a big chunk of data suppose 60000 records in an excel sheet and then adding some more records to it will not help with the training of the data sets and the option a so this select columns in data set see whenever you want to pick data sets for training you are picking the rows you are not selecting the columns because otherwise your uh, data for the columns which you have not picked goes untested and that is not the desired result you want so we will go ahead with option c as our final answer now let's see the next question so in this question we should try to understand the canvas you know see as your machine learning designer why is this designer provided what is the purpose the main purpose is that without writing any piece of code you can still be able to perform machine learning activities testing your models build your models test your models deploy your models so there are three purpose build test deploy this is something which you can do it through your azure machine learning designer now the question is asking this designer has which two components so are these all components of designers let's look at what are the components of designers see on the canvas you can only drag drop these components pipelines data sets compute resources registered models published pipelines and real time endpoints you know but these are shared resources okay the designer uh, you can organ in this designer you can organize these shared resources see now on the canvas you will drag drop a data set and a module why because you know you will have to create a pipeline and you can create a pipeline only if you are able to create a data set and a module a pipeline is comprised of a data set and a module see a module is an algo or algorithm that you run on your data sets suppose there is a missing data file then if you want to run some algorithms so there are certain algorithms which are standards which are provided by the azure machine learning designer as well see you add compute resources only after your pipeline is created and to in order to run that pipeline you need compute resources but uh, if you ask about prioritization then data set and module would have the first priority that you need to drag onto a canvas and if you drag data set and module a pipeline would be created and once a pipeline is created you allocate uh, compute resources so that your pipeline can be executed so these two are the right answers let's proceed to the next question so see uh, what this question is asking is which metric can you use to evaluate a classification model so if you see these metrics uh, so some of these doesn't even apply to classification model like uh, here b c and d would not necessarily apply to a classification model uh, true positive rate would apply so let's first understand the 
confusion metric so this is a confusion matrix in this confusion matrix true positive false positive false negative true negative these are uh, four things which are important now take the case of a covid patient who is actually positive and your uh, prediction also found that he is positive so this is called true positive now suppose you meet a guy who is already vaccinated uh, they have already taken moderna or some sort of covid vaccination and now uh, your prediction says that uh, this guy is uh, positive so this is called false positive because he is already vaccinated and in most likeliness uh, he cannot there cannot be any reoccurrence of covid positive in such uh, individuals false negative is like the the patient uh, is positive but your prediction somehow says that it is false negative i mean it's it's uh, negative so that's that's where your your prediction is wrong and then true negative is like the patient or or the individual is not covid positive he is covid negative and that is what your prediction also found out so that is true negative so this is uh, a confusion matrix which is used for classification model hence in this case option a would suffice option a is the right answer let's move to the next question so this question is related to the deployment of the models see always remember as a thumb rule whenever you deploy a model you that model should always have an authentication key provided and a rest endpoint why because in for other services to access this model it has to be through the rest endpoints and when they access you do not want public access to these models so that's why uh, an authentication key is important since the question is asking about which parameters to use to consume the pipeline in order to consume the pipeline that means some other resources is trying to consume this pipeline that's why you need the rest endpoint and authentication key a model name is not used to uh, consume the pipeline your you know the other other azure services will not use the model name they will use the rest endpoint and they will provide the authentication key see in the past creating uh, your machine learning models was a big task now with azure machine learning designer this has been made very easy it has a gui that is a graphical user interface which will help you create these models with the drag drop feature absolutely you know in many cases no coding experience is required no code is required so these are the right answers this brings us towards the end of the part 1 of this video series please subscribe to my channel and like my videos see you in the next part of this video series